Next, introduction on the microwave propagation and anti-fading technologies. The factors affecting the microwave propagation. The first one is a land form. As shown here, the reflection from land affect receiving signal from main direction. The four types of land form, mountainous region, foothill, flatland and large acreage of water. The atmosphere and weather is another main factors that affect the microwave propagation. Atmosphere absorption mainly affect the microwave whose frequency is over 12 gigahertz. Refraction, reflection, dispersion in the troposphere. Scattering and absorption loss caused by rain, fog and snow. These mainly affect the microwave whose frequency is over 10 gigahertz. The classification of the fadings. These are the types of fadings that occurs in the atmosphere and the weather. As you can see here, these are the mechanism, the sustained duration, receive level and the effect. The free space fading formula is given as shown here, where D is the distance in kilometer and F is the frequency in gigahertz. Referring to the figure below, you can see that the output power, PTX, the power level is increased when it's combined with the antenna gain. After going through transmission, you can see there's a free space loss happen that makes the power level decreased. The receiving power, PRX, is higher than the receiving threshold, is called M fading margin. Absorption loss is mainly caused by atmosphere. Absorption to the microwave frequency lower than 12 gigahertz is smaller than 0.5 dB per kilometer. Compared to the free space loss, this absorption loss can be ignored. Rain and fog fading. Generally, different frequency band has different loss. Less than 10 GHz, its fading caused by rain and fog is not serious. Over 10 GHz, relay distance is limited by fading caused by rain. But over 20 GHz, the relay distance is only about several kilometers for the rain and fog fading. Next is the K-factor fading. Equivalent radius, Re equals to Kr, where R is the real radius of the Earth. The value of K is depending on the local meteorological phenomena. Next is the scintillation fading. The particle cluster formed in a local atmosphere for pressure, temperature or humidity is different as other area, and the electric wave is scattered by it. You can see this in this figure. Next is the dark type fading. When electric waves pass the atmospheric waveguide, super reflection occurs. Next is the multipath propagation and fading. The receiving path include direct path and other reflection path. Multipath fading is caused by the signal's interference from different propagation path. Fading can be classified based on the field strength of the receiving point. For example, when the receive level is higher than the free space level up to few dB, this is called as the upward fading. Fading can also be classified as fast fading and slow fading. This can last up to several minutes to several hours. Frequency selective fading. Frequency selective fading will cause the in-band distortion and decrease system original fading margin. By referring to this figure, you can see that the normal and the selective fading. This selective fading occurs on a certain frequency. There are two types of anti-fading technologies used. One is the anti-fading technologies with device and another with system. As you can see in this table, adaptive equalization, cross polarization interference counteract, ATPC and forward error correct. For the anti-fading technologies related with system, we have the diversity receive technologies. First is the adaptive frequency equalization. This is related with the device. As shown in this figure, the signal spectrum transmitted is a standard signal spectrum. After a transmitted, it will be encountered with a lot of interference and multipath fading, causing it to distort. So after we receive this distortion signal frequency, we using this slope frequency domain equalization, the spectrum after equalization can be restored to the first signal spectrum transmitted. Adaptive time equalization. 
as you can see here, before equalization, after a certain time, the signal spectrum will be distorted due to many factors. So using this adaptive time equalization related with device, we can have the signal spectrum back to the standard signal spectrum. Automatic transmit power control, ATPC. This is used to reduce the interference to adjacent system, upward fading, DC power consumption, and refined characteristics of residual error rate. Next is the XPIC. XPIC is a cross polarization interference counteractor. As you can see in this figure, you have the horizontal polarization and vertical polarization. When there is two signals using the same frequency, such as this, to avoid the interference between the horizontal and the vertical, we can actually use XPIC. Diversity reception. This is used to minimize the effects of fadings, includes space diversity, frequency diversity, polarization diversity, and angle diversity. But in actual, we are only using space diversity and frequency diversity. So this is related with system. First is the frequency diversity. The merit of using the frequency diversity is we actually need only one set of feeder and antenna. But its disadvantage is that it's using the utilization of frequency band is low. We need two frequencies for this frequency diversity. Space diversity. This is another type of diversity with system. The merit is saving frequency resource, but demerit is system is complex and need two or more sets of feeder and antenna. This is using the same frequency, as you can see in the picture. For other anti-fading methods, we can also use other anti-fading methods depending on the situation or location. For this example, it's using the blocking the reflected wave by some terrain or obstacles. This is using on a different heights. Another anti-fading method that can be used is using the different height antennas in one hop, such as in this diagram. As a summary, the digital microwave communication definitions we have gone through. The frequency bands and radio channels arrangement, the structure and functions of digital microwave equipment, application of the digital microwave communication, microwave propagation and fading, and also the anti-fading technologies. Thank you for watching.